Welcome, foot travelers. I'm Micah. And I'm Simon. We are here in another day in Las Vegas, and today we're actually visiting a couple places, and we are visiting the newly built and open resorts world, and then we'll be heading over to one of the newest restaurants over at the Palazzo, which is Xpot. Yeah, I'm really excited for uh, today, Simon. I'm uh, really excited for a resorts world, mainly for their famous uh, food uh, street eats. Yeah, also called the uh, hawker stalls, um, kind of mimicking the hawker stalls you find in Asia, um, over in Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, those places, you know, where they offer a, a whole bunch of different types of foods and they're all next to each other. So you get this nice variety to choose of different kind of foods you want to eat. And, you know, with these hawker stalls, they're usually generally pretty, pretty delicious. Yeah, I, I think uh, the hawker styles are a really great idea, especially for Las Vegas. You get to really try out the different type of uh, cuisines from all sorts of uh, areas uh, within these uh, regions. And also, they, they do also include like the local uh, popular uh, barbecue spots in the uh, U.S. as well. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to really see was kind of, you know, wait to see some of the hype die down about Resorts World because I know a lot of people did go to uh, Resorts World to kind of check it out once it opened and now, you know, since we went after it's been open for a few months, um, you know, I wanted to see how was it doing and seeing if, you know, they're still doing pretty well or not. I think uh, one thing they did really, really well with uh, this uh, restaurant area is uh, decorations that they made. Um, you, you can see all the bright uh, lit signs that you would see in like, a normal hawker area. Also like the ground. I, I think you pointed this out Simon, like the ground, they did really good with like the little cracks and and also like the stone uh, he pebbles, is that what you call it? Yeah, I think the cobblestone steps they had. Um, yeah, it was pretty interesting, they put some detail into it and yeah, when I remember pointing out those cracks on the sidewalk and I kind of looked to see, you know, is it was it on purpose or maybe they made a mistake, but actually they put it in there and you can kind of tell that they they did it to kind of give more of an authentic feel as if you were actually somewhere in a hawker stalls in Asia. Yeah, and uh, one thing to note is uh, when you do come here, um, there is one centralized location to make all your food orders. Uh, so you make, you pretty much just make all your orders in one area, give them your phone number, they'll text you when your food is ready, and then you just go up to individual uh, restaurants to pick up your food. Yeah, it's a pretty different way of ordering where it's not quite you know, that traditional way where you're sitting there and somebody comes over and takes your order, or you go order and you kind of just sit at the register and you know get the things that you want. Um, so it's a little mixture of the new technology and, and ordering style, so pretty interesting. I think uh, one thing good about this uh, style is uh, they also have those uh, plexiglass or glass uh, walls where you can actually view and watch them uh, prepare your food for you. And just something to note, um, the hawker stalls are not next to the kind of mall area that you see earlier in the video. Um, it's kind of off on its own, um, actually right next to the casino floor itself. And so if you are looking for it, it's not in the mall section and you kind of have to walk in towards the casino and it'll be kind of on one of the sides, um, pretty much in the center of the casino. And uh, as you see here in the video, we're going through the different uh, restaurants and um, ordering the different uh, types of uh, dishes that we had. Um, in this one, you can see like the dumplings. Um, they're from the Achun uh, Shandong dumplings. And for me, I ordered the roasted duck from the Fuhu Shack. Um, you know, it was uh, it was good. It was your typical. Um, roasted duck. Um, it had a nice crisp skin, um, juicy, uh, nothing to complain about. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and, and for me, I, I actually had, I was pretty hungry when I came here. Pretty, pretty uh, excited about all the different foods. But I, I would have to say I'm pretty disappointed actually. Um, we went to uh, Bong uh, Tong Ki which is a very, very famous uh, restaurant in Singapore. Uh, they are known for their Hainan uh, chicken rice. I just feel like I got scammed. I mean, this thing is not even remotely close to what Hainan chicken is. Um, I feel like they just cut a bunch of corners. Uh, the chicken is not even supposed to be grilled. And then the rice itself has no uh, chicken flavor either. 
I'm like really really disappointed with this like I mean the soy sauce I mean I, or the oyster sauce I'm not really sure what that was but it, it's not how it's supposed to be you're not supposed to have this stuff here I, I also had uh, the Grayland uh, clay pot rice um, that was also very very disappointing it was just too much soy sauce like I was watching them make it in front of you um, and you can watch how it's prepared and everything and I saw him just pouring so much soy sauce on it it's nothing like I could just tell him hey stop stop don't put any more in but he just kept going and then by the time I got the dish I thought okay maybe it's uh, just how it was prepared I should just try it right but yeah it was just too salty <laughs> yeah I kept remembering when you were eating it um, you kept complaining about how salty it was and how much it was difficult to eat the eat the, the rice because it's just so salty the main thing with uh, clay pot rice is it does have like that dark color to the rice and to everything because mainly when you cook it in a clay pot rice it kind of gets burned so you so I, I think in a way when they are adding all that soy sauce they're just trying to get the look correct but the actual taste of it it should not be in this way uh, and, and the funny thing is even with how uh, dark it looks right now um, they even added like or, or they gave you uh, additional uh, soy sauce packages in case it was not salty enough yeah I think I think they're still in a work in progress you know they opened up with with a good amount of people who came with fanfare and then you know now they're just kind of trying to settle in and get things to kind of run smoothly so hopefully you know in the future as as they start doing more things and kind of getting more used to providing all the different foods a little bit better in the location that that they'll start to improve and really provide you know some really good hawker style food that if you've ever visited you know in Asia that you'll realize how great the food is over so after uh, having lunch in uh, Resorts World, we kind of walked around town. Uh, we walked around a Resorts World just to check out the mall a little bit more and to explore what's new inside this mall. And we slowly transitioned down to uh, Venetian and for dinner. Yeah, we went over to the Expot, which is a new place located kind of on the Palazzo side of the whole compound at the Palazzo Venetian. Um, and this was something that I, I did really want to try. Um, it's something that I've heard of in terms of a uh, hot pot place that's pretty popular. And so I was excited to go try this one. Yeah, I was really excited for x um, especially being um, it being like a high roller style uh, hot pot where it's really luxurious uh, items that they offer and also with the types of uh, Wagyu meats that they had. I thought this was going to be a really good experience and, and being um, Palazzo right now, it was during Christmas time so they had all the de Christmas uh, decorations up uh, as you can see in the video. Yeah, and they always do a pretty good job in terms of you know adding those decor and i think most casinos itself does pretty well in terms of um, putting these you know really um gorgeous decorations to kind of celebrate whatever season that we're in and like micah said in this case it was right there during the christmas time so you have the christmas trees and all the other kind of uh, holiday uh, decorations that go in that's associated with christmas so yeah we did walk around because you know as usual we had to kind of burn off and get our get our hunger back on um, so we did walk around and take a look at the Venetian Palazzo before we headed over to dinner over at Expo. Yeah, so one thing to note is uh, we did make reservations to uh, Expo. Um, being a popular restaurant, we wanted to make sure we had a table by the time we got there. It was actually pretty busy when we went inside. There was quite a bit of people. So um, definitely if you want to give Expo a try, do make those reservations or um, you know, you'll risk uh, not being able to get seated. Yeah, I, I, another thing uh, to uh, note is um, e as busy as they are, and even with the reservations, uh, they still kind of make you uh, wait to make sure your table is ready before they get you uh, seated in to the restaurant. And uh, as you can see in the, in, in the video here, um, there's robots that roam around, um, there's RGB in the, in the ceiling with the different uh, decorations. 
yeah, it was pretty interesting to see. I really did enjoy watching the robots um, bring out the food. So the robots generally would carry different uh, meats or vegetables they would bring out to a certain location on the floor. Um, it was pretty interesting to see it go through and kind of pass you by or kind of come up to your table and drop off whatever you know foods you had for your hot pot. And that was pretty cool. Um, and as you can see, the uh, servers will grab whatever um, you know, dishes that are on the robot and, and kind of drop them off at the tables as needed. Um, so that's definitely something cool to see and, you know, kind of something I think kind of towards the future we'll start seeing a little bit more of as, as more restaurants start to uh, incorporate robots into, into their service. And uh, with Fixbot, they do have uh, two different uh, menu types uh, of choice you can do. Um, you, you can choose the a la carte menu where you just choose wherever you want. Uh, we actually went with the chef uh, tasting menu, which goes for about 155, I guess, is uh, what we had. Um, so for the appetizer, we started off with the Wagyu salad. And for broth, I chose the uh, creamy lobster uh, broth. And it does have a real uh, lobster tail inside. And it was really creamy too. And for my broth, I actually had the golden chicken, which, you know, as, as Micah stated, there was actually a piece of chicken bone that was in the broth, you know, to keep it uh, flavored. And also um, with uh, the appetizers and everything, um, there was also the uh, swan uh, cake that you saw it was like the black uh, swan. Um, it was crispy on the outside, so when you bite into it, it was really soft. I don't quite remember what was in the interior of that uh, duck itself. Um, and then as a uh, add-on item, we did add on the Wagyu Feast, which is the golden cow you see in the video. Um, with the Wagyu uh, Feast, um, it also included the filet mignon uh, ribeye with foie gras, um, beef tongue, ch chuck, uh, short rib. Uh, and short rib uh, cube. Yeah, the, the add-on is actually an additional $28 to that $155 for the hot pot itself. So just a reminder and just something to note that yes, it can get definitely pretty expensive to uh, to have all these different, uh, you know, really delicious meats and, and food all for this hot pot. Even though it's, it sounds like it's a lot of money, but I think for a fine dining restaurant, you really do get a lot of food and I think the stuff that we got here was pretty good quality and everything tasted really good too. There was besides just beef and, and meats, we also had like vegetables, we had um, a seafood platter too with uh, lobster and oysters and shrimp, shrimp. yeah and, and more stuff. Yeah and the presentation as you can see especially of this uh, cow and, and kind of the parts of the meat where, where um, it's coming from the cow it's pretty immaculate it, it's pretty awesome uh, I really enjoyed kind of how they presented um, another thing to note is they have great service they're always coming up and checking on if you need something um, and one of the things also is they'll actually come and help prepare some of the items uh, one of the things I do remember is for the beef cubes is the server would come with a hot stone and they would actually cook that up for us and then um, let us know when it's done and then give it to us on our plate so we can try it. Yeah, and the server did come by a couple of times and, and with, every time they laid a uh, new item down on the table, they told us, yeah, do you want to cook this for this amount of time? Uh, eat this one this way. Um, there are different sauces that they include on the table as well. Um, so it, it was like a really good uh, overall experience because you get to really try everything and and there's no uh, it's no no different from like a other any other restaurants where where uh, the server would tell you how, how something is prepared or how something should be uh, eaten the best way. And uh, Simon mentioned about the server coming up to uh, cook for you on the hot stone. Um, that reminded me of, of a restaurant where I, I had a hot stone uh, with a steak when I was in Hong Kong. So that was, that brought back some uh, really good uh, uh, memories for me. Um, I think the hot stone was really good. Uh, it's definitely a, a great way to uh, cook the meat really uh, quickly and just searing it so you don't overcook anything. Um, it, it was overall a really good uh, experience. Um, and also, 
continue on um, on the menu uh, there was an option for entree entree uh, choices within like the wagyu sandwiches uh, golden wagyu rice with uh, black truffles and also with the wagyu uh, foie gras bibimbap uh, we actually went with the choice of the golden wagyu rice with a black truffle just something different and again the server also with the uh, the golden wagyu rice with the black truffle they actually prepared and um, dished up the rice for each of us too so um, you know we didn't have to go in and dig in and grab the rice ourselves, and they did that for us and since we were shooting everything and for you guys uh, they did kind of just watch us as well so they, they knew how to do the pacing really well too so they weren't overcrowding the table I, I very much appreciate that part yeah it definitely helped with the filming and you know it's it's always not easy to to get some extra space and and try to capture all the things and you know you really want to eat especially when the food looks so good that you know you want to just dig in but you know they they say that the same well that's the saying goes is that the camera has to eat first so um, that's just what you got to do when you're filming food yeah and, and as for the desserts uh there was many choices uh we went with the crepe uh, cakes kind of like the lady m style i had the, i believe i had the passion fruit and then simon had the green tea yeah i had the green tea and this is actually pretty good and one of the things that at least i i prefer in terms of crepe crepe cakes is not to be a little not to be soggy and to have a nice bounce to it and, and kind of hold up um, there's some crepe cakes that I've had before where you know it, it's it, it looks a little sad because it's not quite bouncy and and it doesn't hold its structure as well as it should um, in this case their crepe cake was pretty good at least the green tea one I really enjoyed it uh, nice bounce to the bite uh, soft uh, a little bit of chewy and great flavor yeah, I agree. I think structure of uh, the crepe cake is very, very important. Like, like you see here in the video, when we put our spoon through it, it doesn't just collapse and break apart. Um, like a great crepe cake, uh, that's how it's supposed to be. Just stay upright with every bite. Um, with the passion fruit, I've never had a crepe cake with that flavor before. Um, I wanted to see how it tasted like. Uh, it was actually not overly sweet. I know a lot of places they make uh, passion fruit flavors really, really sweet, and uh, that was just—I think it's a good balance. It's not—it's not too sweet, and it's not so light where you can't taste uh, the passion fruit flavor. So, overall, if you're willing to, you know, fork the money, um, I definitely think it's a place that you should go give it a try because you know it is pretty good food, and you, know, you can't go wrong with good food. And with all our videos, we'll always end with our notables. For this notable is the Wagyu Feast from Xpot. I really enjoyed this uh, Wagyu Feast. It's an additional $28, which is not a lot for an add-on item, especially for Wagyu. There's so many different cuts. If you are a big beef uh, lover, and especially if you like Wagyu, um, this is definitely uh, worth try and to support our channel don't forget to hit like subscribe and hit the notification bell for the youtube algorithm and for more photos follow us on instagram see you guys on the next episode